Hi, everyone. My name is Christian Bergner, and I'm a lead cloud ar architect at Controlware, a cloud integrator in Germany. And yeah, I have some things to say. I always wanted to say, but I never did yet. So today, I want to give you an insight into my diary of change in the dusty financial sector. So let's get started. Yeah, in the beginning, we always get some kind of customer requests. You know, this, this, this might be, hey, we need some support for automation or AWS landing zones, or we need a firewall concept for Azure and Google Cloud. Customers with those kind of requests often say that they have been in the public cloud for years. I mean, and that they only need concrete support here or there. And I have to add, we're talking about small, not about small startups or fintech or neo brokers here. Yeah, we're, we're talking about the big financial enterprises and like major banks, for example. So I call it the dusty financial sector. And yeah, so after first meetings with our customers, the picture looks quite different. I mean, I felt this little, little boy here uh, in front of this sheer number of stairs, yeah, that I am supposed to climb, yet you can imagine now it's even harder. <laughs> so this is because there are just a few more challenges in addition to the original manageable request. And yeah, from, um, from an organizational point of view, we got, for example, very large companies here with many, many silo departments. So uh, the thing is that they don't really talk to each other. And at the same time, we have very high pressure from management in terms of time and materials, uh, time, uh, in, times of, in terms of time and results, sorry. Um, and since you remember, we have been in the public cloud for years now. And that combined with an historic innovation and investment jam. And sometimes we only got one contributor on behalf of the customer. So I see, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm not, the f yeah. We're talking about several customers here, so it's not one speci specific here. So. And from a technical point of view, uh, we got strongly widespread on-premise thinking. So, uh, and network-oriented design thinking. It's more the on-premise guys. And um, often, we have very complex setup of the uh, existing public cloud landing zones, uh, if they exist at all. And um, yeah, another example, account and privilege provisioning yeah, often was sluggish and heterogeneous. It could, days, it could take days to weeks in some cases and to get those kind of things done. So yeah, how the heck shall we deal with all these changes? Yeah, so yeah, you can imagine we had to roll up our sleeves and come up with a really good approach. And again, from an organizational perspective, we had to involve all required uh, departments and break down the silos. This is really number one, because yeah, we got tons of departments, and like I said, they don't really talk to each other. For just, just a few examples. We got networking, security, DNS, firewall guys, then we got the cloud uh, uh, colleagues there, the AWS, the Azure, the GCP guys. Then we got governance, risk, and compliance. We got architecture, crypto, CICD. Often these are all small departments, and they are not talking to each other. So there are just a few. We really get them all on the same table. And furthermore, we have decided then to take an agile and iterative approach to react quickly to requirement changes, because those requirement changes, yeah, they come in on a weekly and they even daily basis. Yeah. And at the same time, we will rely on agile coaching, team focus, and commitment instead of classical pro project management. Because so we work self-sufficiently according to the DevOps principles, including 
daily stand-up meetings, uh, and pulling our task independently instead of waiting for someone to give us a new task. Yeah. And furthermore, we live maximum transparency, uh, which enables, for example, priori prioritization by stakeholders and comprehensibility. This is just as an example, we have a prioritized list, yeah, for example, in Azure DevOps or in Jira also, and uh, everyone has transparent access, and we go through it yeah, once a week, uh, even yeah, in, the, um, in our daily uh, stand-up meetings, but with the stakeholders once or every two weeks. Yeah. From a technology side, we start with known technologies, so to build trust. You can imagine those are likely rather the non-cloud native ones. And then we add new technologies over time for automation, repeatability, auditability. And another thing is we go live quite early with an MVP, so just with a minimal set of features. And then we add new features over time so, uh, and other technologies over time. So uh, for example, the cloud native ones. So you see, oh, no. So we are able to receive early feedback like that. You know, with the MVP, we see what works, what doesn't work, and we can take this into account, uh, and we are able to steer things the right or the left way. Hence, we follow an evolutionary, an evolutionary approach here, and I, I know I have now spent a lot of time talking about here challenges and how to deal with them. However, what I've learned from those projects here is that the right approach is key to success for those projects. So using nice technology and tools is one thing, but the mindset change and the cloud adoption is nothing that happens in the twinkling of an eye. It takes time, empathy, patience, and persuasive power. So, what happens? There should come something next, but it doesn't work. Okay, now it works. Okay, enough of that. Now let's talk about the technical stuff you we're all waiting for. I brought two projects that we are doing in the last years. Uh, the first one here is our hybrid parameter automation project at a major bank in Frankfurt. And uh, here our goal is to provide a secure, agile, automated and hybrid parameter that meets all requirements of compliance, finance and the business departments. So therefore, we support building up the basic public environments in Azure and in GCP using HashiCorp Terraform as infrastructure as code and uh, HashiCorp Vault to store all keys and credentials. Yeah. Furthermore, we established a CICD pipeline uh, using Bitbucket and Jenkins as a pipeline tools. Those were the predefined tools by the, uh, by the guys on, on, um, from, the, from our customer. And with this set setup, we're the only deploying our eight productive multi-active FortiGate firewall clusters in Azure and in GCP, whereby each cluster is consisting of several uh, active firewall instances. We are also managing cloud native security mechanisms like routing, security groups, firewalls, etc., via this pipeline. And we are even managing the FortiGate configuration and policies with the Terraform FortiS provider, so the settings inside the FortiGate firewall instances via Terraform. Yeah, and what comes next? Yeah, we want to integrate more cloud-native security service, you can imagine. Also, the identity and ZAZI features shall be integrated, and a security management solution for enhancing the approval workflow process, you can imagine uh, there are a few approval steps in these kind of, uh, with those customers. Yeah. That's about it uh, for the hybrid parameter project. Now let's move on to our multi-cloud automation project at an 
European financial institution. And here our goal is to deploy and continuously evolve a highly secure, flexible, and self-service-driven multi-cloud environment. And therefore, we first standardized and simplified the existing AWS landing zone, including transition to Terraform. In parallel, we start with the adoption of GitLab as code management and pipeline tool with the classic GitOps approach. And with these two steps only, uh, we reduce the time of provisioning tasks and changes, some from days and weeks to hours and even minutes. So, and additionally, the approval process and change management tracking was built into the pipeline as well. So, for example, the change documentation is automated via an API call into the uh, HP Service Manager tool. Later, we introduced Terraform Enterprise and Vault Enterprise, what yeah, gave us an enormous improvement in security. And with HashiCorp Vault, for example, we dynamically generate secrets in AWS deployments, replace the AWS Secrets Manager uh, with the Key Vault engine of Vault. So, furthermore, Azure was launched as a second cloud provider. So, we have, to, uh, we have moved to a multi-cloud strategy now. And therefore, we had to build up, yeah, of course, landing zones in Azure again, and uh, evolve the pipeline for working across cloud providers. You can imagine with Terraform, that's much easier than with the cloud native tools. And again, Later, we started using Packer for creating our standardized, sys-based, and hardened customer-compliant VM images. For example, in AWS, our pipeline generates a new machine image, including an ID. And this machine image is then whitelisted in Sentinel uh, to be used by the product teams. And so, yes, we are also using HashiCorp Sentinel to ensure compliance. And this machine image policy is only one example. We also ensure that DNS entries uh, deployed via Terraform do not contain wildcard entries, and that they are only deployed into that DNS zone uh, that com corresponds to the affected app or the environment. And another example are IAM roles. Um, so Sentinels ensures that no admin, po admin policies are deployed. Uh, to eventual, yeah, that might bypass our uh, pipeline with that generated admin policy. So we use Sentinel to ensure compliance. And as you may see, this is in the end the key to enable secure self-service. So just in summary, in the beginning, we had some kind of service team to, be, to deploy cloud resources mm -hmm. via tickets and, yeah which led to many delays and dissatisfaction, you can imagine. And now the product team can deploy their resources on their own, and Sentinel ensures security and compliance. In fact, that's the main topic we will expand next, the self-service concept. And uh, yeah, furthermore, there are still some old conf test policies that need to be converted uh, to Sentinel. And there are still a lot of on-prem apps that need to be, to be migrated. And in the end, we want to integrate more and more cloud native service. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they grow like mushrooms out there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is it. I guess my time is up. Uh, so thank you all for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, um, don't, please don't hesitate. Just come to us. We are all are running around with these green shirts here from our company. So you should find us. And I cannot run away. So. <laughs>